Good evening, and welcome to Jazz Vespers at St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Tonight, we are going to be listening to the music of Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington was, of course, a very great jazz composer and band leader. Uh, he was born just at the turn of the 20th century, so his life spanned uh, the first three quarters of the 20th century. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to turn this off because I was working with our tech folks before, and if I don't turn off the volume, you get to hear it in a delay. Anyway, um, uh, it's said that while he, he was a very accomplished pianist, but it's said that his real instrument was his orchestra. Uh, he was one of the originators of the big band jazz, and he led his band for more than 50 years, which is very rare. The, um, his musicians really uh, uh, stuck with him, which says a lot for who he was and the way that he cared for his musicians. What's often not known about him, though, is that he was also a person of deep faith. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight as well. He grew up in the Baptist Church. His parents raised him in both the Baptist Church and the AME Zion Church. And so he knew a wide range of hymnody and of scripture. Ellington's uh, biographer, Terry Teachout, says that he read his Bible every day and prayed regularly in his hotels and dressing rooms. Ellington's one son, Mercer, noted that his father was so religious Anything that downed religion had to be wrong. We have a convoy of trucks going by our church right now. I don't know if you at home can hear it, but we're certainly hearing it here. But they are leaving. Yeah, I can see them going. <laughs> Duke Ellington had a sister, Ruth, and she claimed that the whole Ellington mystique was based on, quote, the philosophy of life in which he profoundly believed, namely Christianity. As a jazz musician who works Saturday night, Sunday morning was not a good time for him to be found in a church, uh, but it is said that he often attended midweek services and would just walk into a church to be inspired by sitting in the pew. Throughout his career, he took material from gospel tunes and wove them into his jazz music, and so tonight we will hear some of that music. First one, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. <laughs> Do 
we sing. Do up, 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 do up. It makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Just give that rhythm everything you got. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God, for with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
the presence of a forgiving God was always real to El Ellington. As can be witnessed by a line in one of his songs, forgive us our necessities and the hunger that makes them necessary. There are those who say that Christianity, particularly with a critique of slavery and injustice, is the underlying aesthetic behind much of Duke Ellington's astonishing artistic achievement. In Black, Brown, and Beige, that premiered in 1943 at Carnegie Hall, he experimented with a longer suite meant to take the audience on a musical journey from Africa into slavery, then Harlem and beyond. The piece began with Work Song, a song of burden reflecting the times of slavery. The hero, named Bula, discovers a Bible, teaches himself to read it, and then passes the word of God around secretly, huddled under a tree while the white folks went to church. Ellington remained deeply concerned for civil rights and wrote songs about Martin Luther King Jr. and others throughout his time. Jazz and religion, he believed, are instruments for unity and freedom, or at least he thought they ought to be. Knowing himself to be a child of God, he believed that wisdom and joy came from seeing the reflection and miracle of God in the wonder and beauty of the world. And that is a quote. It inspired a great deal of his work. I invite you to join me in the psalm that is printed in your programs. I will read the lines in light print. I invite you to respond with the lines in bold. Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone, he alone is, is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put, Put your, your trust, trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts, hearts before, before him, for God, God is, is our refuge. refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the, On the scales, scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O God, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. <laughs>
In the last decades of his life, Ellington wrote three jazz oratorios called Sacred Concerts. The first debuted in 1965. His aim was to break down the walls between the sacred and the secular, to awaken congregations to the spiritual dimension of life through American music. He was a little miffed, understandably so, when the Baptist Ministers' Conference of Washington, his hometown, publicly refused to endorse the music because of its worldliness, which has been a common um, you know, stereotyping of jazz as being too profane, too secular, too unholy, um, when it's really expressing these very deep emotions. The opening number of his first concert was uh, In the Beginning, God, and it, in fact, won a Grammy Award in 1966. So encouraged by the wider acceptance of this music, he wrote the second concert of sacred music. That premiered in 1968 at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City to an audience of 6,000 people. Yeah. Ellen Ellington later wrote that he regarded this concert as the most important thing I have ever done. Not perhaps the best music of his career, but that to which he attached the greatest significance. The third sacred concert took him the better part of 1973, the last year of his life, to write. When asked why it took him so long, he replied, you can jive with secular music, but you can't jive with the Almighty. The premiere was at Westminster Abbey at a concert sponsored by the United Nations. More meditative than his first two jazz oratorios, this composition concentrates on prayer and love. Ellington was, as we say in the church, both saint and sinner. He had his flaws. His dalliances with women were no secret. But despite whatever character flaws he had, Duke Ellington was a man of faith and believed in the presence of a forgiving God in his life. He answered the call to follow Jesus through his music, a gift that spoke to millions then and still does today. At its best, jazz can carry us from the depths of sorrow to the heights of joy. Jazz carries this aesthetic in its fabric. 
Duke Ellington was a musician who was able to articulate that narrative of redemption through his work. And so I invite you to hear the gospel reading that we'll hear this Sunday, which is a call narrative in the Gospel of Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus passed through the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus.
Duke Ellington's unwavering faith in a forgiving God may have had something to do with Reverend John Garcia Gensel, a connection that winds this all together with Jazz Vespers at St. Peter's. Reverend Gensel was a young pastor uh, at a church, for those of you that know New York, at Broadway and 93rd Street, uh, and he was a jazz lover. So he decided to start a Jazz Vespers, and when some of his parishioners said, well, that's the devil's music, his response was, well, then, why let the devil have all the good music? So uh, he moved from there down to St. Peter's, which is um, at uh, 54th and Lexington in the City Corps building. It's on the bottom. It's still there today. And he was good friends by then with Duke Ellington and Duke's sister Ruth. And Ruth, in fact, played a major role in helping Reverend Gensel to establish Jazz Vespers at St. Peter's in New York. The service was set up for 5 p.m. on Sunday because, as I said before, you know, Sunday mornings isn't a good time for jazz musicians who play on Saturday evenings. But there were many well-known jazz musicians during that era who played at Jazz Vespers at St. Peter's. Thelonious Monk, John Coltrane, Dizzy Gillespie, Billy Strayhorn, along, of course, with Duke Ellington. In 1968, Ellington dedicated a piece in his second sacred concert that I mentioned earlier to Reverend Gensel. It's called The Shepherd Who Watches Over the Night Flock. Duke Ellington died in 1974. His funeral service, which they estimate at 12,500 attendants, was at the Cathedral of St. John's in um, the Divine in New York City. Um, Reverend Gensel participated in that service, and he said that Ellington's faith had deepened in the later years of his life, and that Ellington called himself God's messenger boy. I arrived in New York City in the mid-1980s, and at that time, Jazz Vespers was still being held at St. Peter's. Duke Ellington, of course, was already passed. But uh, Reverend Gensel was still there. He was a character. Uh, and Jazz Vespers was going strong and still is going strong to this day. And that became the spark for why we have Jazz Vespers at St. Peter's here in Honolulu. So thank you, Duke Ellington. I invite you to join in prayer. After each petition, I will say, O oh God, our source of light, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the creative spirit which you have breathed into human life. And especially this day, we give thanks for the creative brilliance of Duke Ellington and the path of faith which he followed through his life. As our souls are moved by music, Awaken within us a recognition of the presence of your spirit. O God, our source of light, hear our prayer. 
God of creation, grow within us the grit and determination to work for your gospel of peace and love in this world. Guide us in being agents of transformation, working for justice for all people. O God, our source of light, hear our prayer. Fill our souls with wonder for your creation, as Duke Ellington was in his many in many of his, as he was inspired in many of his musical compositions, that we will treasure all that you have made. Lead those working to address climate change and guide us all in caring for our environment. O oh God, our source of light, hear our prayer. Stir within the souls of our politicians and in the heads of the world's nations the desire and ability to lead with wisdom and a desire for peace. We especially pray for a resolution to the conflicts in Ukraine, Gaza, and other war-torn regions of the world. And here in Hawaii, we pray for the continuing discussion of Queen Liliuokalani's reign and restoration of the islands to the Hawaiian people. O oh God, our source of light, hear our prayer. Bring safety to refugees around the world fleeing war and violence and migrants seeking brighter futures for themselves and their families. Open doors of cooperation and working collectively as nations in addressing this humanitarian crisis. O oh God, our source of light, hear yeah. our prayer. Here in our state, guide this new legislative session and the lawmakers working on our behalf to pursue the well-being of these islands and all who call these islands home, to listen with open ears and to find a way where all people find this, these home, this home to be theirs. O oh God, our source of light, hear our prayer. Give hope and healing to those struggling with addictions, pulled down by despair, or undergoing treatment for illness. O oh God, our source of light, hear our prayer. Uphold those grieving the loss of a loved one. Provide arms of comfort and open doors of hope. O oh God, our source of light, hear yeah. our prayer. Creator God, you've called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Provide us with that peace which the world cannot give, and a song in our hearts that rings with joy and gratitude. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working through us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. <laughs> Take me down to Duke's place Wildest boxing town is Duke's place Love that piano sound in Duke's place Saxes do their tricks in Duke's place Fellas swing their chicks in Duke's place Come on, get your kicks in Duke's place
Eagles. Mark Tenoy on bass. Dan Del Negro on piano. Reggie Padilla, tenor saxophone player and our band director. And in the corner, Manny Dio and Maisha Stovall making this possible for all of you at home. Thank you. And our acolytes, Lily and Jasmine Dio. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. We are so glad that you were here. Do come back. We're here every Thursday, 6 o'clock. Aloha.